So hello, welcome to uh, video 13. Um, this is uh, going to be doing the floor section. Work continues on fitting the nose framing and fuselage. The floor section supplied here will be fitted in a future issue. So the parts that we get this issue, we only get the one main part, 13A, the floor section stroke Bombay roof and we get four PM screws which is 2.2 by 4 millimeter one of which is spare so in stage one we're going to be taking a couple of bits um, from well one piece from part four I'm going to be attaching it to the cockpit floor then we move on to stage two we're going to be adding a piece from part one onto it then on to stage three we're going to be adding a piece of glass from stage two then on to stage four we're going to be adding the gun turret that we made in issue two so then on to stage five we're going to be adding on the uh, port nose fuselage assembly from issue one and then on to stage six we're going to be taking the starboard nose fuselage assembly from issue two and then lastly stage seven we're going to be adding the hatch from stage four and adding that Okay, and this is what the completed work looks like. Um, basically, we've not done anything with this issue. Um, I have a slight problem with it. All we've done is we've added parts that we made in previous issues, which obviously raises the question, could we have not done that earlier, or could they rearrange the parts? Uh, I'm not going to say anything negative about it, because we've got the parts um, but I, I don't like it when we get parts and we don't do anything with it. Okay, so coming in issue 14 is the wing support and four screws. Now, this will be the third issue when we've only got a single part. I'm not complaining about the bulk because they're nice big solid metal pieces. But in one, we actually did a surprising amount of work. And the next one we did very little with the actual piece. I wonder what's going to happen next week. So this is um, uh, stage 18 of the uh, Hong Kong models bit. And what we're going to be doing today is the reverse of what we've been doing in the last three episodes. Um, let me bring through the other stage. So what we've done in the last three videos is we've done the, the front fuselage. We've painted it. We've added all the bits in. And then the next stage, we did the rear fuselage. And we painted it, put all the bits in. And then we've glued the two halves together. Uh, obviously, we've had to be a little bit careful because of the uh, uh, the over the, the glue and we didn't want to remove the paint. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to glue the two halves together. This means that we don't need to be quite so careful. Any glue squidge we get can easily be covered up. It won't affect any paintwork. Um, so exactly the same as we did it before. Um, we're going to pop some glue on these on these uh, flat surfaces and then we're going to pop them together and then we'll uh, just add any extra bits that we need uh, reinforcing with uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. So all I'm going to do, and I don't need to be so careful here, I can just pop some glue on there on these tabs. And there's a, a tab there which I want to get at. Oops, I've accidentally got a little bit on the outside. And that's not the end of the world. And then I just want to get a little bit of glue on these tabs. And I'm sure that some people may comment on the last video about taping it or, or clamping it. That's actually going to be quite tricky because it's not really anything to clamp it to. Um, so I'm just going to hold these together with the emphasis on making sure the outside is um, is together. If there's a slight gap on the inside, I think we can live with that. So give that, there we go, enough time. And I think that's all it needs. Um, so outside wise, I think that's absolutely fine. And whether by luck or by technique, I think that's actually gone together a lot better than the previous one. So this is the previous one on the bottom. And I think that's gone together so much nicer. And I think that's going to need a lot less work 
to sort out. Um, now, there is a little bit of squeeze out there, which I'm going to resist the temptation to wipe because it will affect my uh, um, it will affect my quality of my plastic. It's going to melt into it. Uh, and bear with me a sec. Sorry, Mister, but today is a bad one. There we go, my friend. Right. So what I'm then going to do then is what I'm then going to do then. That was a terrible, wasn't it? So I'm going to get my ex Tamiya extra thin, and I'm just going to reinforce it on the on the gaps on the inside using that capillary action to our advantage. And I wish I had the camera on there because if you'd have seen the capillary action there, it would have really demonstrated that perfectly. So we're just going to get some glue in these gaps. And these gaps here, we don't need to be frightened to use glue. Okay. Any any areas that we can see where the, the plastic is making contact, the glue can all go in there. Absolutely no issues. As I said before, don't be scared to use this glue. Excellent. Okay, so one area of concern on the outside is this part where the fuselage meets the wing and that's down there. Now we will probably have to put some filler in there but I'm just going to shoot some Tamiya Extra Thin and then that glue will really get into any gaps and it will hopefully make the bond stronger and then I've got a bit of a gap there on the outside. Okay. Excellent. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll let that set as long as we want, preferably overnight. That would be really, really good. And then what we'll do is we'll start to do some work on the exterior to make it look really nice. There is an obvious gap there. But to be honest with you, I think we've done a lot better than the gap we had last time around. Look, I haven't, I'm not even pointing that out. Okay. Excellent. So I'll let that, um, I'll let that dry off a bit and then we'll come back to it. So I've let both halves dry and I think I'm going into the realms here of it, things I've never done before. I've got the equipment for it, but never actually done it. This is the worst side. This is actually pretty good. Um, but where there's a little tiny bit of a gap, and this is much, much worse. Uh, I'll see if I can get it from an angle. Uh, you see, I've just had a little sand out. It's actually this side. So it's actually, you can see it's actually raised on this side. So we need to take all of that down so it's level and we need to make that look like a panel. Um, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, and um, we're going to rub away all of that detail for the uh, rivets, but it's got to be done. Um, so I'm going in with a sanding stick that I think is going to be too fine. Um, I'd rather go too fine. Obviously, once you're really experienced, you can look at that and go, yes, I'm going to need this much grit. Um, if I find this is too fine, then I'll go for something coarser. Um, but if I go in for something that's too coarse, I'm just going to take too much down in one go. Uh, I've also got my little display. Uh, I find that for general filing, this is actually not very good. Um, but what it's good for, it's kind of your fine tuning. Um, so let me, let me show you. If you want to go in with a large area, you can go in... And you can use your sanding stick however you want to use it. Um, but this is very good for targeted areas. So let me... If we've just got a small area to do, we can get in there quite nicely. Now what I would normally recommend, and I don't think we need to here, is when, um, when you're using an electrical sander, because it's going much faster... I personally would recommend going a higher grade um, so it's not 
it, it, I, th I always think that like a 1000 electrical would probably be about the same as an 800 or 600, you know, because obviously this is only moving this fast. So whereas this is going, so you can see that you're getting much, much faster results. So let's, uh, in fact, actually, it might be easier if I use the electrical sander um, with a lower grade, but we'll see how we go. And actually, it's um, it's kind of proving a point at the moment, uh, which I'll be able to show you. Let me just carry on doing this, and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. Right, perfect. So, let me just give that a wipe. So, you'll see where I've sanded, it's dull. But where I've not, where it's not been able to get in, it's still shiny. So you need to carry on taking this down. Let me show you through the medium of pen and paper. Um, so let me, does will that work? That will work. Right. So you have a piece there. And then you have, this is exaggerate. Imagine this through a mic microscope. And then you have another piece that you've joined. And you'll see it's not level. So as you sand, you'll see that there's that little gap in there that the sander can't quite get to. Okay. And so as you sand, you'll take a, a little bit off there. So then as that comes down, your sander will then hit a smaller angle. And so on and so forth until it's level. And that's the shiny bit is the natural plastic. Uh, let me just bear with me. I'll just I'll, I'll give this a quick clean. Yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. Uh, so give that a quick wipe to remove all the dust. Make sure it's nice and clean. Wipe off any excess. Excellent. That should show it up quite nicely. So you'll see that little tiny shiny bit there. Let me let me get my little pointy stick out. So just along there, it's still shiny. It's still a natural plastic like this. So what we need to do is take this this ledge down to match that. Now there is another way to do it, and that is to actually prime it, uh, which I may actually do. I'm not going to, um, um, I'm not going to spray it uh, with the airbrush because just for that one line is a bit too much. But what I think I'll do is I will take that down until I think it's about right and then we'll pop some black primer on it. Okay, so that is done to the point that I think it is done. Um, I think I've leveled it all off. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've deliberately left a tiny bit because I want the next bit to sort of demonstrate. But I keep running this with my fin fingernail and it feels, feels level. Um, now, what I've also done is I've switched out to a skinny stick. This is actually a 240, um, but I've kept this as... Uh, I think this is a 600. Now the trouble with 240 
is it is going to leave scratch marks. So what we'll then need to do, once I know I've got it all level, I'll go over it again with it with an electric fine sander and then I'll work my way up the grits. I'll probably go from this 180 and I'll go straight up to a thousand and the thousand will start to restore the uh, uh, the shininess, the, the natural finish. We have completely wrecked some of the rivet detail which we are going to have to put back and I'm probably going to have to rescribe some panel lines. That's where I'm really scared because I've not, something I've not really done before. But we'll get to that. We'll learn. So I'm going to use my black primer. This is my AK Interactive. I love this because it can be brushed on or it can be airbrushed on. Um, now, it doesn't matter about the actual coverage um, as long as we get some primer on because what we are going to do is we're going to paint that that seam line and the object of the game will be to remove it so just make sure you completely cover all of that seam line get it right in there okay and then we'll leave that to dry um, There we go. Now, no, I haven't done the other side. There is a very good reason for that. There you go. It doesn't even matter if you don't get it smooth um, because we're going to be rubbing it all off. Now, that primer is going to act as, as a kind of a tracer bullet. So why haven't I done the other side? Well, we've removed all of this rivet and panel detail. Uh, so we're going to use the other side to, as a guide so I can see where all the panel lines are meant to be. You'll see that there's a panel line there. If I can get the focus. There we go. It comes. There, this one. Look. I've lost it. Right, there we go. So panel line there. It just comes across and it stops. And it doesn't. See, this one has got rivets, but it hasn't got the panel line. So we, we're going to use this as a copy. And then once we finish this side, we're then going to use... Um, we're going to copy the other side and then when we do the other side we'll use this as a copy so i'm going to let that dry and i'll be back shortly okay so that primer it's not cured it's just dry it's, it's 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 not how i would like it but it's certainly dry enough for the purposes that i want it so i'm going to get my electric sander and i'm going to try and sand off that primer and that should well it shouldn't but if there is any if i haven't filed it properly it will leave a little faint black line and the smaller that line is the better job I've done in the first place and this will clog up your sandpaper I'm sorry to say actually I've done a better job than I thought I had Oh, that's actually not too bad. Okay. I think we can stop it there. So, still a bit more work to do in the middle. Well, that's interesting. I was expecting that black line, but it looks like I've done a better job than I thought. Okay, not a problem. So, a little bit of... Uh, so, obviously there's a big mess, it's got it all in the panel lines, but can you see down there, it's actually quite adequate, I'm liking that. So we'll do the same on the bottom. And the sandpaper's falling off. Look at that. I might have to replace that. Let's switch uh, to a sanding stick. Oh, got the wire caught. Let 
That's really good actually, I'm quite happy with that. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so there is a little bit up there which I've not got, but that's where the wing is going to go. So that, that will get covered up by the wing. Right, so that I am happy with. A little bit too aggressive there. Right, so because obviously we've got scratches now in in the uh, in the paintwork in the in the actual uh, model, what we need to do is to switch to something a little bit finer, and uh, we'll we'll just polish that up. Right, there we go. Happy with that. So, what we need to do now, this isn't going to be as bad a job as I thought. Um, we need to restore... Actually, they're all still there. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So, I'm going to get this tool out that I've got, that I've never used. Unfortunately, I don't have a handle with it. This is a riveting tool. Um, I'll see if I can find some plastic. Scrap bit of plastic. I must have a bit somewhere I normally do. Right, let's use this. So, you'll see that this is a piece of plastic sheet. And what we're going to do is we'll run this rivet, riveting tool along it. And because it's got these spikes on it, it actually creates... Can you see it there? It creates rivet detail. So if we want to do a nut like... See, let's have a close-up of it. So... All we do is we just do run it along there. And I'm pressing quite hard on this because it's quite hard plastic. But you see it just creates some rivets for us. So what we're going to do is we'll I'll do a zoom in. So hopefully you can see what I see. That's a bit too much, isn't it? Right, there we go. So we'll just have a look. Generally, the rivet detail is okay. I can see a little spot there. So I'm going to have to take my glasses off for this and I might block it with my head. Um, so. There we go. Rivet detail restored. Bit more there. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I would say I've got it so that if you just looked at it, it looks okay. If you were to get the microscope out and you knew everything there was to know about the Lancaster, then you'll probably go, oh, that's a bit dodgy. But I'm happy. I'm happy enough with it. Now they make these tools for various scales. Um, I don't know if there's a set distance for these rivets, but this I believe this is a one to thirty-two scale. It does say one to thirty-two on the wheel. Don't know if you can see it. Um, just having a really good look. 
because it is important to get the uh, rivets back because when we come to do the weathering we're going to be applying a wash and that wash is going to sit inside all of the rivets and if we have some rivets that are better than others it's really going to show up but I'm actually really happy with that that's gone rather well the first couple of passes that I've done I didn't press hard enough but now that I've kind of figured out how the wheel works excellent really happy with that right so let's do a quick cut and I'll go on to the next bit okay so the next tool ish newish tool I have in my armory is this scriber and what we're going to look for now is any panel lines um, and what we're going to do is we're going to give that a gentle scrape we're just going to etch out a new panel line very very gently just the weight of the scriber and it's only this really now these panel lines aren't really that deep in the first place so it's not going to take a lot to restore it now you're going to see vid other videos that are going to tell you to put tape on and this that and the other there is a little bit of a panel line already I'm just reinforcing that line and there's me saying I'm actually quite good at doing a straight line but I've gone slightly skew with there but I'm okay with that um, and then the last one is this one now this bit there I feel that's not a panel line I feel that's one straight panel all the way along there um, on this one it's going to be a gap but I think that that line only exists because um, because obviously where the join in the fuselage is right guys I am happy with that I'm going to call this a day uh, I'm going to do the other side off camera because it is exactly the same as this um, did I say this is the worst one no this is actually the worst one that I've done um, so this is going to be a much easier job um, as you can probably tell um, yeah there's a little bit of black black primer on there but I'm okay with that I'm happy enough with it I think once it's painted it's going to look really nice um, so next week I'm going to do a little bonus for you um, a bonus for you bonus for me um, I think what I'll do is I will do a double um, episode in one um, when I did this inside I did this as one stage and I did this as one stage um, a lot of it what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start that one again I'm gonna do the same on this uh, I'm gonna do it in two stage uh, well you've got this stage and then you've got this stage um, but I think it's going to be just as easy to do the whole lot in one go so I will do the entire inside and we'll call that two episodes so that means I will give you two episodes of the of the Harshet Lancaster and we will give it a double score um, it's uh, might be a lengthy bit but I think because I'm going to be spraying this inside um, there's no way I'm going to stop there and say right that's this bit done next week we'll carry on spraying so I'll just do the whole lot in one go um, and then the week after we will do um, let me just check so 17 we're doing today 18 and no we're doing 18 now so we're going to do stages 14 and 16 that will bring us up to there then the week after we'll do the weathering uh, and then we're going to move away from the aeroplane we're going to actually do one of the uh, one of the figures so I hope you enjoyed that um, my assessment of doing this I didn't think I was going to in oops sorry I've just knocked the camera with the very long fuselage I didn't think I was going to enjoy doing it it's one of those things that's a necessary evil I'm not the biggest fan of sanding 
Um, and when I began di begun doing it, I didn't really enjoy it. I'm sitting there going, I'm not liking this. I'm really not. But as I got into it and I start to get results, actually, I really did enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's the result that I like, not necessarily the process. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it, guys. Um, right, guys, that's me signing out then. I'll, I'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. So, on to the scorings. We are now on issue 13. Uh, I just noticed there was a mistake made. We duplicated the issue numbers. I think we had two issue 11s. Um, so, last week was issue 12, even though it said 11. This is now issue 13. So, Harshet has been doing the wireless operator seat. It has cost £10.99, bringing the total cost up to £129.87. Uh, there's no additional cost for the Hong Kongs. We're working on the kit plastic. Uh, so we still stand at 729.97. And the difference has now dropped a little bit to 600 pounds 600 and 10 pence. Or if you're doing the basic model, that what I've bought up to issue three, it's the difference is 248 pounds and five pence. I have given Harshet a score of one this week because all we're doing is assembling parts that we've collected in previous issues. Um, I think it's a little bit mean to make them make them make you collect parts and then sit there staring at them, and then they suddenly give you a part and you don't do anything with that part, but they they say, "Oh, put all the previous parts on." Uh, I'm going to be slightly generous to Hong Kong this week. I'm giving them two. Um, and that's because I really enjoyed that. It was a skill that I've never done before. And it kind of had me worried, especially as I'm doing it on camera. When you do things off camera, if you make mistakes, nobody nobody sees the mistake unless you tell them. When you're doing it on camera, if anything goes wrong, it's there for the whole world to see. Um, so I, was, I felt a little bit under pressure, but actually it went really well. I really did enjoy that. Um, so the current running score is 21 to 18 to uh, Hong Kong. Um, and that puts them three points in front. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, next week is going to be a double issue. It's going to be issues 14 and 15. The reason for that is because I'm going to be painting the fuselage, I've now glued the two pieces together. It's going to be just as easy for me to do both of them. Um, so I may as well do two, two harsh yet Lancasters. Um, and then we, we could just catch up by one issue. Um, and then I'll see if I can, I can pick up little issues to catch up on here and there. Um, it will mean that the beginning of the video might get quite lengthy. Um, this week I've done a bit of an experiment. I've gone through all of the stages. Um, I've gone through all the stages quite briefly. Um, there are videos out there by uh, people like World of Wayne, uh, John's Model Making. Obviously, one of my favourites is Building with the Boys. So I urge you to go on over and have a look. And after Christmas, I will be producing my own build videos as well. So I will actually summarise even shorter on the harsh yet. Um, so, yeah. It's going to be quite long. I do apologize. Right, guys, take care, and I hope to catch you next week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Ta-ra!